So the experiment that we're going to mimic in today's activity is a very simple experiment, the standardization of an acid solution. But it's important that we do it for three reasons. First is, of course, that it's in the WJC curriculum and other A-level curricula, so we do need to think about it. The second is that it allows some calculations and some experimental points that a lot of times will be kind of glossed over um, as you're steaming through the A-level curriculum in class. And then the, the third reason is that standardizing an acid solution is actually a very important process if you're interested in doing accurate calculations associated with experiments on acids and bases. So let's give a quick introduction to it. Um, you may or may not have actually spent some time in lab, but when you do, you'll find that the technicians make for you solutions of different types of acids, different types of other compounds and so on. And a lot of times you think, oh, they just opened a big bottle of a particular solution and just poured into little bottles for us to use. And in some cases that's true, but much more often the technicians actually have to make those solutions themselves. So let's think about how a technician might make a cubic decimeter a litre. I should warn you, I use cubic decimeters and litres interchangeably, just subconsciously. I hope that won't mess you up at all. But anyway, how would a technician make one cubic decimeter a 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid? They would not open a bottle of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. Rather, they would open a bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid, as illustrated here, that has a concentration of 11.65 molar. And what they're going to have to do is take the right volume of this concentrated hydrochloric acid, dilute it so that you've got a cubic, uh, cubic decimeter, a litre of 0.1 molar HCl. Now, there's two aspects to doing this dilution. The first is figuring out how much of the HCl, the concentrated HCl, uh, the technician needs to use. And then the second thing is talking about the experimental process. To do the first one, we use the dilution equation. Now, there's quite a few ways to write this, but essentially, conceptually, what we're saying is that we're going to take a certain amount of this concentrated solution that contains a certain number of moles of HCl. And the moles of any solute in a solution is the concentration multiplied by the volume. So if we take the concentration here, 11.65 moles per cubic decimeter, multiplied by the particular volume that we're going to need, that will give us a number of moles. And that number of moles is going to be the same number of moles as are contained in one cubic decimeter of 0.1 molar HCl. Because when we dilute a solution, we're just adding solvent to it. We're changing the volume of the solution. We're not changing the number of moles of the solute. So the dilution equation is essentially saying number of moles at the start equals number of moles at the end. Pop in our values, concentration, concentrate HCl in 0.65. Volume V1 is the volume of this we need to use for the dilution. And then over here, the moles in the final dilute version 0.1 moles per cubic decimeter times one cubic decimeter. Plug that into your calculator and you find V is 0.0858 cubic decimeters or 8.58 cubic centimeters. So what our technician is going to have to do is they're going to have to measure out 8.58 cubic decimeters and dilute it to give them a liter or a cubic decimeter of solution. Well, first thing they'll do is they'll use probably a pipette to measure out 8.58 cubic centimeters of the concentrated HCl. And that 8.58, you've got to be pretty precise to get that. So we'll talk about that in a second. But remember that you might not get exactly 8.58 cubic centimeters. So we take that concentrated hydrochloric acid and we add it to some water. If we want to make a liter of the dilute solution, we're not going to add it to a liter, we'll add it to 100 cubic centimeters, 200 cubic centimeters, whatever might be convenient. And then we make it up to one liter using a volumetric flask that looks like this. Now this is the most important thing for students to appreciate because it's the most important error that students make. I am not going to make one liter of this solution by measuring 8.58 cubic centimeters of concentrated HCl and then adding 1,000 minus 8.58 cubic centimeters of water because volumes are not necessarily additive. 
okay in other words 100 cubic centimeters of one liquid plus 100 cubic centimeters of another liquid doesn't necessarily make 200 cubic centimeters of the mixture so what we do is we measure out the 8.58 cubic centimeters of the concentrated hcl because that's the number of moles of hcl that we need we dilute it a little bit by adding it to water we put that into this volumetric flask and then we fill it up to the line in the volumetric flask which is a very precise indication that when you're at this volume you've got whatever the volume of the volumetric flask is which in this case would be a liter or a cubic decimeter very important conceptual experimental note when you're making a solution you don't just add volumes together you take one volume of the important bit the volume associated with the solute and then add enough solvent to get to the right volume of the solution anyway so that's how our technicians would have done it as i said probably tough for them to measure our 8.58 cubic centimeters so therefore we're not going to have exactly 0 0.1000 molar hcl that's okay as long as we know what the concentration actually is and that's where standardization comes in just trying to get an accurate value of the concentration what we do in this particular case is we know acids love to react with bases so we take a known amount of a base which in this case will be sodium carbonate and we determine how much acid of our HCl solution is needed to react with that base because we know the number of moles of base that will give us the number of moles of acid and because we're titrating we know the volume of the acid so we combine the volume of the acid with the moles of the acid and get an accurate value of the concentration.